Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but, the arm... It was the Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear it. We could still do this, because she was dressed in the Nickel Samurai costume. You've gotta be kidding! Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. God fucking damn it, man. I can still prove that, but that's still obnoxious. Order, order. It looks like you've dug your own grave, yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. Literally, he's gone, to, he's gone below the 6 feet. He's gone to 12 feet. He's going to hell. Straight to hell. He's got an economic thriller going all the way down. But Phoenix is going to rise back up. Don't worry. So the person who took this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we know, Mountain Guard is the Nickel Samurai. Thanks to the defense, we've made that all clear. What am I supposed to do now? Mia, help! You don't have time to act lost. You've got to find another angle to attack this from. Hurry! Now, I will bring this cross-examination to- HOLD IT! Your Honor! Again, Mr. Wright. You've already removed any and all questionable areas in this testimony. It's about time you removed from this court, Mr. Wright! Really, I have to find something. Even one little point will do. There are- there are still questions left unanswered. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Alright, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? The person who received the bear. There was one thing in Mr. Powers' testimony that was very unclear. Wait a minute, it's not different? So I didn't lose points for this, but... Aw, oh, come on, they're not gonna... I want to prove this point, damn it! I don't know what else I can go for. Ah! Well... Come on, guys. Give me a chance to prove my own, like, plot. Hold it. Didn't remove any points, but whatever. As long as they didn't remove those points... Might as well make a save right here, just so I'm not doing anything stupid. Here we go. Let's give this one a try. I don't know what else to go for. I guess the bear? The bear is pretty suspicious, like, what it means. Although the bear could be used as, like, a hit thing. Otherwise, like, what was the other one? Power's Testimony. The bear itself? Eh, sure, why not? I can waste a couple points. I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. Bear, Mr. Wright? This was found at Mr. Ungard's mansion. However, Mr. Ungard was arrested at the hotel that night! Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh. I think Your Honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it was Mr. Ungard who took this bear to his mansion. Here we go! Why, that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. Only Mr. Fowler did, but we don't listen to him. There was no way, time-wise, that the defense would have taken the bear home. <sighs> Disaster averted, it looked... <laughs> you haven't got the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Ungar's mansion. We have to find this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time, he was to kill her. To kill her and Gar were working together, so to speak. And to kill her was hiding in Ungar's mansion. As its butler. What a bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to Ungar's mansion by the killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, Ungard had him do so. I assume because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. 
as well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Mountain Guard. I see no reason for this trial to continue, therefore I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out like this. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? Of course! I will now announce my ver- Oh, get wrecked. There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left to do is this one dirty trick. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is a client of the assassin. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found in the guard's mansion. However, it's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What am I saying? <laughs> it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. My, my, my. The real client? Yes. Tiss, tiss. Is this all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the real client of the killer and therefore the murderer? Well... Sorry to throw you under the bus, Adrian. Adrian Andrews? Yes, we already know that you tried to frame Mountain Guard for the crime. By wearing a spare nickel samurai costume? Ah! Uh, then, then the nickel samurai's arm that I saw. That could have very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. On Guard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at Mr. Ungard's mansion, it was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Edgeworth, give me something to work with here, besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Or can you discount the, this possibility of either being true? Honestly, it's a 50-50 shot here. Although it does seem more suspicious that it is Matt. Hmm. What's with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell and guard did it. I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin this kill on someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty. It's a murder of all things. This is to save Maya. This is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order! 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 All destructive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor. For the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along for his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright. Even you must have thought it strange and wondered. Why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specially bring that bear to unguard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor? The prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Mrs. Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. Again, man! Oh, here we go. I see. Now Andrews is gonna know I threw her under the bus and she's gonna be all upset with me, man. Oh, it's gonna be great. And I dropped my cap again. There's the line, uh, every fucking session. Gotta do it at least once. Where'd it go this time? Oh, Cap, I need you, Cap. There you no, are. Oh, come on, Cap. Cap, you can't be doing this to me. Oh, I'm off my headset. I feel like Tim talking about his butt. 
Literally. Alright, seriously, where's this cap at? This is a little cap. Crap. Uh. I wonder if we'll get to call the cat to the sand on a secondary point. We'll be able to call him like we called, uh, the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the, the, the toucan bird parrot. Fuck, I can't find the cap. You know what? Fuck it. Chug that last little bit of water and I'll forget about it. I don't care. I'm wasting your guys' time at this point. An hour anyway. Yep, an hour of basically wasting time. But at least we're getting stuff done. Well then, the court will take a short ten minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. I'm sure it's going to take me ten minutes to get through all the dialogue anyway. Yes, Your Honor. Court is adjourned for ten minutes. <clears throat> That took two hours for them? Well, it only took an hour for me. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Do you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the deal to Adrian. <laughs> I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick? Pearls? Where's Mia? I... I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. Uh, well, Pearls, looks like you're gonna have to help me in court from now on. A really strong power? Is it the same power that keeps calling me? Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is... It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch onto. That's good, pal. And what about you? Anything yet? We forgot where the killer and I are? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but... What? We don't have any more time! If we just have one, even a single clue would be really helpful. Great. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking of myself. I've got to keep this trial going until Maya's been rescued. But I have to just run out of luck this time? Have I just run out of luck this time? Is all our hope for not? A tent! Huh? A tent? Is that attention? I can see a circus! No, it can't be. Mia? Oh, okay. It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away, no shit. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I could see a circus tent outside the window, about 300 feet away. Gumshoe, is there a circus in town right now? Uh, there's only one, pal. The very big fuck. I knew it. Maya's somewhere within a 300 feet radius of the main tent. What? Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map. About 300 feet radius from the main tent. Hurry! And? And? I could see a mailbox under the window. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Hmm, uh, okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. It felt like it was an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so. I heard her. An old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later. So don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Dude, with how much people are calling me, Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. <laughs> Why is that funnier than it should be? Gumshoe, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. Then I'll nail it into the bastard. We'll nail him on the fucking cross. Hey, that wasn't a 10 minute recess. That was either an 11 or a 9 minute recess. You guys lied to me. Court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real criminal. Now then. Prosecution calls the defendant manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. I'm not sure why I did that. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called.
called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You've seen it before? That's right. It's only natural that the witness has, Miss Andrews. Could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secrets? Alright. Why? Why does she... What could she possibly know about this bear, man? Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At its center is a small cavity, with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. And the suicide note was hidden in it. So this figurine, it's a container of sorts, is it? Yes, looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is superb craftsmanship. Oh, yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. It looks like there really is something to that bear after all. Ha! <sighs> Fusro, yawn! Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. Hold it. Sorry, lady. Here's my policy. I'm holding everything today. That's right. Hmm. But it looks like an ordinary figurine. Well, that's what the clock looked like. True enough. To people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At the center is a small cavity, with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't... Oh wait, I'm, just... I'm going through that... Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I'm going through the same bullshit again. I don't even know why I'm going to bed. It's almost 3 o'clock in the morning. Try this one. So, if you can take it apart, and how does one go about doing that? Well, you first turn on its tail to the right and then push it in. Oh, yes, I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh, this is most interesting. A boy in his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. <laughs> oh, don't mind me. Uh, go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. So what did you find after you took the puzzle apart? At center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. And how do you know about this item? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this is... this is a present from you? That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for one. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. So who exactly knew how to solve the puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland, so I doubt there are any people for this same bear and that. There are many people with the same bear in this country. But this looks like it could be easily broken. Especially if someone wanted to get what was inside. Well, it's a toy. But it can never be the same again once it's been broken. You really can't tell that by its small jewelry box just by looking at it. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or jewelry box? Didn't you just ask this? I never told anyone. And as long as Juan never told anyone either, then only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? Then of course that means Mr. Unguard didn't know, right? I think this is about all I'm going to get for now. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? I think even you have come to realize... <sighs> ...that there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a... Jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we have agreed to this point, there is only one logical question that can come after that, and that is this. What is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we're going to find out next. Witness? Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please.
there is a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is that? It looks like a note. Something tells me this isn't a suicide note. Something tells me it's something terrible. Let me take a guess. Wait a minute. She gave it as a present. What is it? I don't think we need to guess at what that is. Do we, Mr. Ray? It's the suicide note. Alright, well, it actually was a suicide note. I thought it was actually going to be like, you know, another fucking, like, note for the assassin or whatever. But no, it's a suicide note. The suicide note. The suicide note left by Juan Carita's former manager. Celeste impacts. Until now, no one knew of his whereabouts. But just as they suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Carita himself. <coughs> it seems Celeste impacts had very beautiful handwriting. She just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Order! Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But, I couldn't find it anywhere because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Edgeworth's pace. So now that the suicide note's been found, what's the next logical question? What's on the suicide note's next logical one? What is written on the note? That's right. At least, that's what I would think. Now then, I believe it's only appropriate the contents of this code be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. And I was going to burn it. For her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of this note aloud. Very well. The judge's voice rang loud and clear through the dead, silent courtroom. In her note, Celeste Impacts left to us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and then being thrown away by a guard about being engaged to Karita, and to Angara's role in destroying that, and about how she decided in her despair to end it all. And that's all, Miss Impax, and that's all, god damn it, got a voice crack there, and that's all Miss Impax had to say. There's one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. Ungard. Then, what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the context of the note... Context! CONTENTS of the note public! Stop making X's, Ross! After the post-ceremony show... He was going to hold a press conference. My word. Mountain Guard values above all else his refreshing like a spring breeze image. Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. You know, even if we get him the not guilty verdict, he's already pretty much fucked because of that note. I wonder if we can read it now. I kind of want to read it. Shut up, court. It's a guard's fault that the woman killed herself. And this time, he even went so far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. Oh, terrible. What a selfish person. I guess there's slimeball lawyers out there who would defend those creeps, too. Hum, hum, hum. There is no margin for doubt here. It looks like the tables have turned, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Now you're the one getting hate on by everybody. Good stuff. At least the voices don't carry into the court record, because I want to read this. No, you can't. Well. Mr. DeKiller's Klein Gull was to obtain
contain the suicide note. And the only person who needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that this bear with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. It seems that we've come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Uh, I'm going to escape from this one. Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Gumshoe hasn't called yet, so you know what you must do. But now, I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay, there are two deadly pieces of evidence. The figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of this situation through one of these. For example, I could take that suicide note and rework it. And if you really think about it, both of these pieces of evidence actually prove the exact same thing, but in Adrian's position. She would be the only one that would know about the bear, and thus know about the suicide note that she learned from Juan. In other words, she also knows about this, but she would want the suicide note so she would know what happened to her mentor. In other words, Adrian is just as likely to be the murderer as, uh, as a Mr. Matt Carita, or Mr. Matt on guard is. The gavel's already in the judge's hand, Phoenix. Does he ever drop it? Hurry. The suicide note or the figurine? Which one of these should I pursue? I think you can pursue both, but... Wait. Well, duh! The figurine! How the fuck would On Guard know about the bear? Objection. Please wait, Your Honor. Oh, God, listen to him. Oh, man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it? It's like he doesn't even care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. The assassin took this with him from the crime scene after murdering Mr. Corita. At the request of his client, of course. So, what's your point, Mr. Wright? I don't think it's possible that Mr. DeKiller's client was Mountain Guard. In fact, I think there is a contradiction here. You can't tell just by looking at it that this bear is really a jewelry box. The chances that Matt and Guard thought the note was inside this bear are zero to none. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly. But I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. What a cocky bastard. After all, there's no reason why Matt and Guard would ever know and want to think that there was a jewelry box like this. Despite the fact that you need to purchase the pair. No. Yeah, you on my side now, guys? Order, order, order! You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? <laughs> it was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. <laughs> I believe a show of appreciation is in order. The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. <laughs> uh, I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? Oh, uh, fuck. I forgot about the camera. And since he had the camera. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he could have known that, in fact, there was something in the... He wouldn't have been tampering with the bear anyway. Or would he have? But wait. What? The bear was a gift from Adrian. Adrian! I did it! Oh god, I don't even know what to do at this point. By the way, yes, I just finally noticed that Adrian was the name of Rocky's girlfriend. It's a very simple video camera, your honor. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. S spying? What the... I thought that spy cam was in my possession! Matt and Guard and the victim both thought of the others as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. Oh my, my, my. And? The victim, Juan Carita, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Master Matt Ungar. Order, order! <clears throat> Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor? You... Don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. 
Well, sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you're confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuffed bear's eye. But what about the other stuffed bear's eye? But this camera that I have is not the same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house in a hunch. Using this. Oh, great. I'm shoes bug sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Well, I'm not surprised. Mountain Guard's fingerprints were on there. Well, Phoenix, it looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Unguard learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey. Now what's that lawyer thinking? Mommy, is that man the bad killer guy? Shush, stop. Do look at him. No way, his sweating is just so ugh, nasty. Phoenix. Yes, Chief. Have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? What I'm going to do next? Does running away like a frightened child work? I know it seems like Mr. Edgeworth is very close to putting the lid in this case. But... In his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. And I know just what that thing is. I'm glad you caught it too, Mia. Well, what is it, Mia? There's a piece of evidence that you really should investigate. Something you should investigate? I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded for not remembering to look into the item which he had the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Because this is a video game, Phoenix. Now do it yourself. Alright, I think it's time we finally understand everything. Indeed it is, Your Honor. And I'm going to save just in case I fuck this one up, because I get the feeling this is going to be one of those one-and-done deals. Continue! Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that me is talking about? Can I figure out what that still needs to be looked at, or should I let it go? I have an objection, Your Honor. <laughs> that was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Specifically from you. I don't know, I've heard some pretty weak-ass objections. Objection! Your Honor! The defense has no intentions of letting this go so easily. You are beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. Hmm. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. And, and wink, wink, I saw that from Mia. Hey, isn't that what I just said? So, you're telling me I forgot something? You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. But there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. Well, that would probably be... Would it be this? Actually, it might be this. I don't actually know. I mean, I kind of know what they're going at. But here's what I'm thinking. Alright, put your thinking caps on, gentlemen. There's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. Basically, what Phoenix is going about here is that what Edgeworth just proved, just proved, was that there was a secondary camera and that all that shit was going on, spying, spying, and everything was going on. So, the next logical step is that we should prove that it's possible that Adrian could have been the one spying. But, to prove that, we need to know that she had a motive in order to do so. The problem with that, though, is that the defendant's fingerprints were on a camera. 
Therefore, the piece of evidence we should look at would be the bear. Because after all, that's what I was just saying. If you might have been noticing, well, I, I sort of said it, I, I poked, I poked a little bit of thought into it. The bear was handed as a present from Adrian. Even considering that Juan knows what it does, why would he hide the suicide note inside the thing that she knows how to open, if particularly he was trying to keep it from her? But what he did say, though, what he did say was that the suicide note was going to be presented and destroys Spring Breeze, all that bullshonky. Therefore, the piece of evidence we should really be examining still should be the bear, because if you think about it, why would he have hidden it inside the bear? Despite the fact that the two of them know about it, it was a present she gave it to him. She gave it to him, the present. Like, along with everything else, it was a pretty recent present. Even considering all the spying, would you really know that the note was inside the bear? I'm a little less sure of myself now. <laughs> now that I thought about it. But what else could it be? Could it be the suicide note itself? Yes. Because she just wanted to burn it. She didn't know at the time that that's what he was going to present. Because remember what she said at the very beginning? press conference, I knew nothing about that. It's only recently that she realized that he was going to. It's gotta be the bear. I'm going with the bear. Um, let's present button. No, don't present Maya's face. I'm pretty sure Maya's face is the last thing we want to present. Literally the last thing we want to present. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, I do believe some special examination is needed. But I think the item that should be examined is the defense is gray matter. Whoops. Well, I apparently wrong. Maybe my thinking is wrong. Wait, no, 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 don't reload the save. Even though it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but you've already proven that that's not necessary. Once again, I just want to keep my health at this point. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Mia's talking about? Can I figure out what is the blah 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 Present evidence. I have an objection, Your Honor. That was the way to subject. Well then, hear it again, because I got my objection. That gave me wood from saying that in such a voice. Alright, continue going. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Alright, so what did Edgeworth forget? Alright, the bear was my only go for, so I actually don't know. What could it possibly be, I wonder? Let's find out. You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth, but there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. Oh. Well, duh. Guitar case, right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe it's all this. Wait a fuck nugget. Are you kidding me? It can't be. No, no, okay, okay, okay. If they went back to that, I would literally say that there was something wrong with this game. Something very wrong with this game. It'd be more... it, it, it feel like a school test at that point. I actually thought the time was wrong. I thought it was one, like... Another time was wrong. Like, we haven't had a time was wrong, like, a wrong time date in a long time. There was quite a couple of those in the first game. 
and there were a couple in like the first two trials and now they don't do that anymore because they're like we're done but if they tested me right there I think that would have been hilarious oh wait 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 oh it's the camera it only had a one hour time date nope Nope, 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 nope. That wasn't it either. Fuck. You know, I'm making a save state this time so I don't have to keep going through all this bullshit. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so bad at this. But there really is something I should examine about this piece of evidence. I mean, I'm coming up with decent points, I, I think. At least I think they're decent points. Alright, what else have we got here? Well, we got uh, the guitar case. I think that's a thing. Why not? Well, Mr. Edgeworth, is Ross a dumbass yet? No, sir, a couple more guesses and he will be. What else we got? Well, we got the suicide note, so why not? As long as we're presenting everything, here you go! Oh, here we go. That is Miss Impact's suicide note, right? Alright, well, explain this one to me, Phoenix, because I actually don't know this one. I didn't figure this one out. Hmm. Who knows? I mean, sure, the suicide note was found inside the bear, but this bear was in my possession until a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analyzed! Wow. Phoenix... If... People... If any audience member had even a shred of dignity for you. You just threw it out the window. You've become scumbag levels to the people here now. You've gotta be kidding me. That's the ultimate stalling tactic I've ever... Oh my god. Oh. So, as to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impact or not, has yet to be even remotely confirmed. Da -da -da damn Mr. Wright? You can't seriously be suggesting. Mr. Wright? You? Are you saying the suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews? You were the only one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. Guard. Or you were the one. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into the bear? How dare you? Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There is no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. Oh, really? But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve this puzzle is the witness herself. Uh-huh. Miss Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? Wait, did you seriously write the note? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Mr. Ungar. Because she did it. Oh my god, Phoenix actually wasn't a scumbag move. I... I did no such thing. Right. If you're going to pronounce the suicide note as a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. I just did it. It's called the fucking bear, man. Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented this scrap of paper as evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution. That's enough. Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm this handwriting on the suicide note? Is this... It is as the defense stated, the handwriting is yet to be analyzed. If that's the case, it seems that yet again we have reached a point where the verdict is impossible. <laughs> Impos that's impossible! Phoenix, you are digging yourself out of a good hole, but you're digging yourself into another hole and we have to re-re-reprove. Once we get Maya back, that this guy is in fact the person responsible. This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. <laughs> I love how silly this, this scenario is, even though it's so serious. I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate. Handwriting analysis, my butt. That's just the Lord trying to buy more time. 
And Guard is guilty. Look at any idiot can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty. 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 Toast. Ghost. Phoenix? You didn't turn your cell phone off. Please pass it up, you can have it back at the end of the class. It's Gumshoe. Hello, Gumshoe? <sighs> what is with him? Oh, so that's I. Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He, uh... He got away. What? I'm sorry, pal, I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there was some way to make it up to you, I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found a side-out pal, but the two of them were already gone. This is terrible. I'm gonna keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry, I just need a little more time. But, don't tell me we don't. We don't have any more. Guilty. 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 Toast. Ghosts! Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. Wright, I can't. For us to come this far and... Me, you want to just take over the... Oh! What is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. Really? I, I can't do that. Mr. Wright, would you please get a hold of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after... Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch! <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth. Please, you gotta buy me some more time. Court is in session. <laughs> God damn it, Edgeworth. I'm sorry, Your Honor. <clears throat> you were saying? Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. Um, I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I am reluctant to do this, however. It appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. It's time. I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Who is it this time? Please wait, Your Honor. Edgeworth? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I humbly request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? You can perform the necessary test on this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. But can you really obtain the results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourn for today and then reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes. Please, Your Honor. That's all I'm asking for. Please. Please, Your Honor. Very well, what the hell, I got nothing to do today. At the prosecution's request, this court will take a 30 minute recess. But be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. Here we go. Oh, this is intense. I can't stop now. March 23rd, 2.04 p.m. District Court, lobby number three. I'm noticing that number three is appearing a lot with uh, the court. So maybe number three is the only court. Right? Well, what's going on with my situation? The killer. It looks like he got away again. 30 minutes. He can't find her in that time. Ugh. Or can we? Report. Uh, is this Mr. Edgeworth? We don't have time to spit it out. Right. It looks like we just missed him, sir. But to kill left a few things behind by accident and is rushed to get away. A few things. Can we use any of them as evidence? <laughs> I thought yes, pal. Uh, I've got the things he left with me right now, and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. 
Let's just break all the laws, why not? When those guys weren't looking, uh, I swiped the stuff and ran. What? Oh, well, uh, I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir, but I've got to put the law on hold for now. Sounds bad. Gumshoe putting the law on hold. I want to say that he doesn't usually do that, but at the same time, I think he's the only person on the entire police force that usually does that, so... Well, except for Damon again. And whatever her face was, you know, the, the person who was the sister of... Mia? Was it? No, 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 not Mia. It was, uh... Not Mi it was Mia, Maya, and... What was the other girl's name? It was, like... Uh, the, uh, the girl in the science coat lab thingy. Her name was, like... Mie or something like that? I don't even remember. It's my hunk of junk car. I'd say I'd be back in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry. I'll be there. Wait for me. Alright. Just get here in one piece and don't run out of gas. I'm on a mission and no one can stop me now, sir. No one. I'm pulling all the stops and running every lead light. Items left by the murderer, huh? Maybe there's something among them that'll be decisive enough to end this. treats you like a descendant of Adolf Hitler. It fucking hates you. It never lets you win. Even when you win, you still lose. <sighs> Maybe Gumshoe's legs are godly. No one can stop. I'm... What happened? It sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. What was he thinking? We've got to hurry and call for help. But we have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, if we don't get to those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No! We can't let that happen! Well, if there is a way we can find out where he is, then we can stand a chance. <laughs> why, why did Gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there any, any way to find out exactly where he is at this moment? Open up a can of instant noodles? No. What about a scanner? Maybe. There is a way. That's right, there is a way. What? How? I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshoe is through this. <laughs> well, that's a shame. The transceiver? Maybe. I don't think it could be anything else. Transmitter, maybe? I guess this won't work, huh? I guess it's up to me. Alright, I will think of something on my end. Don't get your hopes up too high, but I'll try my best. Did I say something wrong? Edgeworth? What is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. 
I know my client is guilty, but what I'm doing now, I'm paying the guilt on someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say, Defense Attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right. It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict? Is Prosecution Edgeworth here? Yes, Bailiff? There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. They're probably finished with the handwriting analysis. I have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do. Lock! I really didn't think there was a way I could have, like, there was nothing I really could have called him with. Because the transmitter doesn't call. Yeah, there, there's really no way. Save it. Well, let's continue onward. March 23rd, 2.35 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, shit. I can understand the defense acting like this, however, why do you all seem to strong, Mr. Edgeworth? That is... It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? It looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please continue to tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Miss Impact's suicide note. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, discovered that the suicide note is a forgery. Wait, what? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This, this note was not written by Miss Impact herself. It is a fake. Hooray! Mazel tov. The gods gave me a gift. Hooray! Order, 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 Mr. Edgeworth. Would you care to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Impax and who was wrote it, bleh, whatever. We would need more time to do a more detailed analysis, however. It appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Carita. Mr. Carita? Now that I did not expect, but that makes a lot of sense. Well, well. It looks like Miss Impax never left the suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about Uncard. However, suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. Ankar could not have known that, and so the fact remains unchanged. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm. That does sound very plausible. The theory that Ankar had no idea that the suicide note was fake, something seems a little wrong with it. Present some evidence, then. The defense believes that the theory of the prosecution stay contradicts the testimony. And by that, I mean Ross doesn't believe it at all, but he's going to save just in case, you know. Yeah, no, how it goes. If everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, then it's impossible for Mr. Engard to not have known it was a fake. After all, he was spying, was he not? Uh, take a lot. What is this little item called again? Um, a video camera, Your Honor. Well, a very small one, but... Oh, that's right. A camera. Ah, you kids and your fancy toys nowadays. Judge was one of those kids who threw rocks and sticks at it, like everyone. They, they just went around throwing rocks at each other. The dinosaurs, you know. Mr. Edgeworth, earlier you claimed that Mr. Engard knew of the existence of the snow because he was spying on the victim. Isn't that right? Mm. If that were true... Then this means the same. In reverse, Mr. Ungar would have known that the victim had forged the note. Uh. So then the defendant knew this suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed into a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Ungar's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared in a thin air. But Your Honor, it's not as if Mr. Ungar's monitored Mr. Karita 24 hours a day. That's the thing I said. Ah, uh, boy. 
Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ungard didn't know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show some proof that the victim made this forgery in a new place? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not the one that has to present evidence this time, Mr. Edgeworth. For once, I don't have to present shit! Ha <laughs> ha! Order, 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 Mr. Edgeworth. It looks like this time it is you who dug his own grave. I just want to see a picture of us both digging our own graves in the middle of court while Judge just, like, stands over us and watches us. Ugh, as I figured. Huh? As you figured. As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you are not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is... What next? <clears throat> what next? If the prosecution can prove Mr. Ungard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness, this witness is a little... unusual. That's where stuttering? This is not like him at all. Wait a minute. I got one of three guesses of who it could possibly be. One is Lotta. Two is Old Bag. Again. Which I don't think my throat can take that. That would literally be the end of this session if it was... Oh, what's her face again? And three... Wait. No. That would literally be the dumbest thing in the entire fucking world, but... No. It can't be. Unusual? What sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, no. Is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? It's not a person, is it? This witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of who was it that hired Shelly to kill her to commit war Oh. Well then, maybe not then. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, guys. I thought Ezra was about to call the cat. Oh no, I'm sorry. I don't know why I even thought that. I just thought it'd be funny. <laughs> no, I think he's going to call Mr. Uh, he's gonna call Mr. Matt and Guard himself, maybe. That's impossible. Who in the... No such person exists who can answer the question with such certainty. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth. Who is his witness? It is. It's... Um... Yes, go on. Who is it? The man himself. Mr. Shelley the Killer? Edgeworth, you gotta be shitting me right now. You've gotta be shitting me. What? What? Okay, either some bullshit's happening behind the scenes that I don't know about, or Edgeworth made a fake Shelly the Killer. Oh, Mr. The Killer. Wait. Shelly the Killer? <coughs> um, you mean the killer. Or, I mean, the assassin. Yes, Your Honor. He's coming here. To the witness stand. Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright? Yes. Is this alright with you? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. <laughs> I wonder if it really is alright to do this. Very well then, the prosecution calls our own witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there any other way left to us? Is there no other way left to us? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Now then, witness. Oh no, I think I know who it is. And if it's who I think it is, this would literally be the best trial in the entire... I'm going to call it right here. Like, this trial's great, and it is my favorite trial so far out of both games, but this would rocket it into, like, Magnum Zero Place, as in nothing can ever top it. Um... Your name and your uh, occupation, please. No. But that's still pretty hilarious right there. 
that caught me off guard, so that's why I'm not laughing at that, but who I thought it was, was, uh, I, I thought it was going to be Hottie. I thought it was going to be the pervert. <laughs> I thought he somehow called him. Because he, he, like, you can't call me out on that one, right? He impersonates the director, doesn't he? Very good, sir. My name is Celia the Killer, and I'm a professional assassin. I... I say... What is going on here? Your Honor? How can you remain so calm? And what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. DeKillo will testify to this court. So, this must be what that urgent phone call I got earlier was about. Oh no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. DeKiller himself. Witness, please present some proof of... Uh, whatever, proof. I understand. Please wait a second. I'm so hungry. Maya! Maya! Uh, a voice. Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelly the Killer. It looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances, so... Now then, witness. There is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And... what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Carita. Is this correct? As you say, I did indeed kill Mr. Carita. Ooh. Now that we have answered that, let's move on to your name of your client. Very well. Mm, this is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it. A bad dream. I'm going to go get a time machine and go back in time. Stop doing that, pun! Ah, oh, fucking Gintama. Shelly the Killer. What is he going to say? <clears throat> There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than trust between client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Um, hmm. Mr. DeKiller seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. Hmm. While he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor, Mr. DeKiller is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself, then? Hmm. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. About my client. Alright, I actually have to cross-examine this. Hold it! We can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said there is something on this first date. Do you know what the word first means? <laughs> Sorry. Go on. Well, it appears this is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. That's only because you don't know about my situation. I'm still gonna badger the shit out of him anyway. Hold it! The trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. Fast and efficient manner. You strangled him with a fucking scarf! Christ! That's not fast or efficient! It's embarrassing! It's embarrassingly stupid! <laughs> Why? Whatever happened to Dr You know what? You brought him the f- <laughs> He brought him- Oh my god! He brought him the tomato juice! Drug the tomato juice! Christ! It's so fucking obvious! 
No! Strangle him with a scarf! Yes, let's do that! I'm blown away. I am so blown away by the stupidity, the absolute morosity of this killer. He is a... he's an idiot! We keep telling him that he's smart, but he's not! He's a fucking moron! I don't know how he keeps escaping! He's stupid! If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. <clears throat> and that is why you're testifying in this manner? This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the killer name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did... Yes. That person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would certainly... That's enough. Please, no more. Very well. It was only a hypothetical, anyway. And that is the reason I'm here today on this witness stand. <coughs> that seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. Their role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You... Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now. Excuse me, but would you care to die? <laughs> uh, no, I... No, no, I, I didn't say anything. The judge has better watch himself. <laughs> that was actually really funny. It's my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. <coughs> We understand, so please tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say before I do. Ugh, this egomaniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow, that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff. Just tell us the name already. Patience, try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and close, so... You're gonna have to work to get him to talk. I'm not a therapist, you know. Oh. Am I supposed to present something? Maybe I need to go back on this point. <coughs> Trust between you and your clients. I provide my service in a fast and efficient manner. Bullshit. In exchange, I trust it to the clients. Like, seriously, that's the biggest bullshit I've heard all day. Oh my god. I'm sorry, but I was wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person? I have no trust relation in a client who can't trust their assigned role. Just my luck. An assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone. Do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. In that case, I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. And that is the reason I'm here today on this witness stand. Now then, I do believe it's time I reveal the name of my client. Don't you agree? Hold it! What is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness? What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Carita? That person's name is to be found at next time on Phoenix Wright is Attorney. I'm going to bed. Bye, guys! Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. That person's name is... Unknown. Because the key isn't working. Because Ross has not clicked on the screen at this moment in time. 
What's going on, guys? Welcome back for more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. In the last session, a very, uh, very interesting court case was taking place. One in which we were getting our ass literally wrecked in every single way, though it was kind of a good thing, because, you know, Matt has to go down the river already. But, unfortunately, Maya is still, you know, out there, and we need to get him to not guilty, or at least get Maya back. So, let's see if maybe... Shit is going to work in our favor. Adrian Andrews. That slimeball motherfucker. Wow! What? Witness. That's not who you told me it was earlier. Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Adrian Andrews. What? He's lying. He's a lying cock and son of a bitch. This can't be. On the phone earlier! What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. DeKiller just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Edgeworth in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. DeKiller told him a different name. Matt and Garth, perhaps? I knew it. This... This is outrageous! I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. But, but you were the one who summoned this witness. <laughs> you... Shelly DeKiller! My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is Mountain God, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. Huh. Hmm. Wow. All of a sudden, it feels like we can actually win this. <laughs> yeah, seriously, as long as, as long as the person who actually murdered him says it was someone else, you know? Jeez, that's all you need. The judge immediately believes the killers. Like, seriously, every time the killers come on screen, immediately believes them. I'll get and go back to trial one. Also, I have a gallon of iced tea this time. I'm somehow gonna lose the cap anyway, but whatever. Oh, boy. My back is hurting. I just drove for 45 friggin' minutes in the snow. And I'm basically crossing my fingers hoping we don't have school tomorrow so I can finish up this trial and I don't become tired. But hopefully I'll be able to finish this up sooner or later. Not that I want to rush through this game or anything, but... You know... Time to move on, you know. After after how many episodes this is going to be, I don't even know. I think it's going to be, like, over 50. That's ridiculous. I did not expect this game to be that long. Well, I kind of didn't. I kind of didn't. Let's see what happens, though. <coughs> the prosecution has failed to provide a motive and is instead provided this suicide note, which is forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definite of all, definitive at all, we have heard from the assassin himself, the name of his client. Mr. DeKiller's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. No. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this makes that Mr. Mountain Guard is innocent. Shit. Well... You went a little far there, Phoenix, and I think you, uh, you jumped it. You overjumped it. It's like in those, uh, it's like when you're doing the, uh, 15 foot jump or whatever the fuck it's called. Like the, sta no, it's standing jump. That's what it is. Or whatever the hell it is. Like the running, sprinting jump. I don't, I don't remember. It's like doing that, but overstepping the line. We were trying to jump before the line, and now we just crossed the line. So, yeah, no do-overs. Shit. My only guess is that Phoenix is going to want to cross-examine this. That's, like, my only guess here. I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please continue your discussion, and call me when you've reached a verdict. <laughs> Bailiff, please bring Miss Andrews in immediately. What now? With the ways this is unguard- eh, uh, whatever. Unguard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance. To save Maya. Yeah. Boy. But Edward is right. The killer is lying. And on guard, my client. I know he's guilty. Can I live with myself if I win this? Not if you, like, convict Andrews! 
Jesus Christ, no! I actually skipped that line. It was something by cool that have left the bailiff. Something, something. Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Surely the killer is certainly lying under oath. Hmm. It wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please. The testimony just now. It was all one big lie. Miss Andrews. The suicide note may have been fake. But that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death. It was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now. You have to believe me. It was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. DeKiller himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there's quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and button donning the Nickel Samurai costume. But that's... that's... You even have a motive. Dude, if she... If she just let be what be, she literally... Nobody would be in this situation right now. I'd feel bad for her, but at the same time, she literally caused almost all of this. She took the card. She tampered with the scene of the crime, depending on that. Literally fucking everything. But you know why I'm not blaming her for all this, like, call her stupidity? You know why I'm not blaming her? Two reasons. One, I mean, you can't totally blame her. She's a nice enough person. And two, the bigger reason, because the murderer is a fucking moron who... I went on this tangent already. A fucking scarf man strangled him with the scarf and destroyed the whole fucking room! Where the wet ba- He's basically the wet bandit. He's- He's the wet bandits. It's that bad, man. It's that bad. We know that Miss Celeste Impacts is a large part of your life. Mm. So is this large gown of iced tea is a part of Ross's life. It's gonna get him kidney stones later on in his life, let me tell you what. Something fierce. You wanted to follow her. You wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want them both dead. I... No. Mr. Wright. You... You know the truth. Tell them. Tell them the real story. Who the real killer is. Tell them! Please, help me. Yes, I know the truth. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? You don't have to ask me, man. Mile with. I'm certain of it. Phoenix. I can't do it, Mia. I can't accept a not guilty. You are a lawyer. I know. But, but Matt and Gar is a killer. A murderer. I'm a perfin... Uh, wow, I fucked that. I, I'm a perfin. I'm a perfin first, Mia. Yeah. I can't... I can't let him get away with this. I can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be convicted, then I'm no better than on guard. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the facts. That it is because of Edgeworth that I now know the real truth. He could have gotten on guard convicted so many times over, but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I... I trust him? Yes, you do. Mr. Wright, your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. DeKiller. Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Right. But, but, that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. 
I'm not done yet. To see through this witness's lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. There's still more evidence to look at. And I'm sure that once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. Yo, where's my standing ovation now? Come on, people in the audience. Come on. Come on. You gonna shit on me when I'm a bastard? But when I'm cool? Nothing? I don't get a thing? Very well. The trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, please re-establish connections with Mr. DeKiller. <laughs> right away, Your Honor. Let's do this, Edgeworth. Has a verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more. Hmm. <laughs> About? All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well... Actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about? Usually done? But what shall we have him testify about? Mr. DeKiller, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. You legal people and your procedures. It is any wonder no like you'd... Is it any wonder? Is it any wonder no one likes you go to court? Likes to go to? Is it any wonder no one likes to go to? There you go. No one likes to go to court. No, let me tell you. The reason no one likes to go to court is because it's a literal pain in the ass. Oh, I've heard too many stories, mostly from teachers who have been like selected for jury duty, go in, go for questioning, sit in like a hotel for three days, don't even get called up. If they do get called up, they like go through a trial that's friggin' obvious. Takes for five fucking ever takes here to high heaven and at the end of the day they get like three dollars they get below minimum wage they get like oh hey here's your five dollars that doesn't pay for the gas or anything but hey you know that smackaroni is going to make you eat like a king off the dollar menu despite how much mcdonald's you've probably had since coming here to jury duty <coughs> all right let us begin about my client mm -mm -mm. part two what do we got here yeah, here's hoping that snow cancels school. <laughs> As I've already said, and stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. You only stated that once, but whatever. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime. While pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene, Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carita was dead. More appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and the button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. That makes sense, because he was saying he wanted the blame to be placed on himself. In other words, if she had, you know, called in him as the client, whatever, then basically she broke the rules by paying the blame on someone else. He wants all the blame to go to his name as an assassin. Which, once again, is incredibly stupid. Once again, wet bandits. But, despite the point, hmm, this is a most unexpected turn of events. For the, um, fifth time now? Six, Your Honor. However, this time, everything has finally been revealed. Objection! Just a second, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? We still have the cross-examination to do. But you don't need to question testimony like this. Judge. Do you, Mr. Wright? Hmm. Your Honor, the defense will question the witness. As if I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. You know what? I just thought of something. What would happen if I lost all my points here? I think I'm going to lose all my points on purpose and see if he gets my defense client guilty. That would be hilarious if they didn't program it to make it where now Adrian is guilty. Though I think Adrian's the one who's in, like, question right now, so I guess it would still be the same scene. Eh, yeah, whatever. If you scrutinize the testimony, then... Then I'll expose the lies in that oh-so-beneficial testimony. I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. Well, Judge, um... This is two cases, technically, now that Edgeworth has been sort of the cool guy helping me out. 
I'm just returning the favor for once, you know? That makes two of us. <clears throat> the fifth in the last game and the fourth in this one. As I've already stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, and however is probably what Phoenix is going to say. What is it, Mr. Wright? If I press him the wrong way, it might raise suspicions on his end. But I have to do something to waste more time. Um, witness, about requesting a hit. Yes? How much is your fee? I see you're also quite a dark-hearted man, Mr. Attorney. <laughs> huh? If you would like to talk business, we can do so after the trial. Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm not thinking of hiring Mr. Wright. Yes? Y you... You want to kill me. You want me dead. <laughs> Alright, that's actually a really funny line there. What? Why would you think something like that, Your Honor? Guilty! Mr. Phoenix Wright, you are hereby declared guilty! Witness, let's continue. Why did you disclose the name of your client? You know what? I would have given anything if that gave me a game over right now. Like, literally gave me a game over. I actually would have been laughing. I wouldn't even be upset. That would just be hilarious as shit. Oh boy, you know, I really should have connected this headset into the other port on my USB so I didn't have to, like, screw around with this wire and whatnot. Whatever. There we go. Now it's sort of out of the way. One thing I simply cannot overlook is the tampering of the scene of the crime, and we never got to fi figure out the price. Like, oh, whatever. We were just stalling anyway, so I suppose that was a good way to stall. I would think that most people wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had a problem with such a thing, I wouldn't be very effective at my job. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, a change in occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. That goes without saying, Mr. Killer. And their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. However, my client this time thought that they could run away from their guilt. My client did it to frame another for the crime. <coughs> Sorry, I'm holding everything. Just company policy. Are you talking about the button and the knife? Yes, and my business card. Oh, this card. So that no one has to waste their time, including the police. I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. Maybe that's why... Alright. Fair enough. It's still incredibly stupid that you're strangling him with a scarf. You still could have made it completely fucking obvious if you shot him. And also, you could write on his face, you know, Shelly the Killer did this. You don't, you don't need a card. Eh, yeah, whatever. You try to make things easy. My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the surface. He's pretty devoted to his work. But to discard everything and go and stab the deceased with a knife, and even hide my card from sight, that is something I cannot overlook. Hmm. It, it's really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not without him being here. You know what I just realized? The screen's been sort of cut off, hasn't it? I literally just noticed that. The screen's like, it, it's, you're not missing anything, but the screen has technically been cut off a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, 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 the, the, the screen's been cut off. <laughs> I just noticed that. Um, me apologies, guys? Muy apologetico. Let me see if I can fix that. There you go. There you go. That's been going on for, like, multiple sessions, so honestly, no harm, no foul at this point, but still, that, that's kind of funny. Alright, now we're gonna... Do, do, do. Ah, shit. Well, I'm, I'm fucking everything right up, so I better be careful about how I do this. Do I even really need Ross's Dumbass Nose anymore? I'm not really using them. Eh, yeah, whatever. This is gonna be a pain in the ass to get, like... Here we go. So then I can drag that down, and... Bring it around town. There you go. Uh... Is that close enough? Close enough! Hey, there you go. Now it's not cutting off, you know, the part of my health bar and, you know, the arrow. Because the arrow is incredibly important to this. Whatever. I'm planning to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. I like how we're pausing him in the middle of a, like, comma. <laughs> so you're saying most clients wouldn't do such a thing. 
that is correct. Usually, most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my services, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest you plan for your alibi, too. No, I already told you. I have no intention of ever using your services. I wonder if you hadn't gone through the, the original talk conversation that it would spawn a different conversation right here. <laughs> Why does he keep looking at me like I'm the one on trial here? Poor Phoenix. Poor Judge. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carrito was dead. From the very beginning. That is correct. From before my client visited the room. All of my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if that's really true. You know what's strange, though? Andrews did mention pouring a glass of tomato juice. Oh, wait, 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 no, that's not actually that strange. He probably just laid down the glass and didn't pour anything. He probably just strangled him, then left, and then Andrews is the one that poured the tomato juice there. Okay, so that does make sense. I was gonna say, like, if she was lying about pouring the tomato juice, I was gonna say that that would literally be pointless, and it would be strange. But whatever. And man, my butt is really starting to hurt. It's probably like the past three days of recording this game and sitting in this somewhat rough chair. I would get another chair, but that would require effort, and that would also not give me, uh... Like, if I get another chair, it would have armrests, and I can't, like, extend my leg out and, like, you know, put a footrest on another chair. And it's really awkward the way I'm sitting right now. I just feel most comfortable this way, because it makes me feel like I'm lounging around like a cool cat. That is most certainly odd, Edgeworth. I know what I just said was very strange. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Wait. What was that all about? Hold up. I think I missed something important there in my random tangent I had. <coughs> I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. Edgeworth, you can you can present stuff too. You, you well, I don't know. I guess you can't, but still, that was strange. Perhaps you could do something you knew from the very beginning that Juan Carita was dead. Wait, because it bears her finger. Objection. Objection. Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. DeKiller. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room... Your client had no idea that Juan Carita had been murdered. But how... how do you know that? From this wine glass, Your Honor. The glass? I was making a note of that, but that's actually interesting. Because, yeah, she did pour it, and that does make sense, because it bears her fingerprints. Mr. DeKiller's supposed client, through Mr. Carita, had only fainted. Which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim, or er, thought, not through, whatever. Hmm, but isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? No, 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 Your Honor, that is not possible. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would have never left their fingerprints behind. I see your point. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now, only I didn't present it because I'm stupid. And I just want Phoenix to figure out everything. You know, as usual. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? <laughs> Isn't it a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway. Correct. I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client, as you claim, then your client should have knowledge of Mr. Carita's death. If not, then that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. How strange. Yes? Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Phoenix, if the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Am I literally going to have to object the one point I just raised? <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Uh, sorry. <laughs> we are not doing a very good job of this, are we? 
I mean, we're kind of being suspicious, but the judge just doesn't know what the fuck is going on anymore. He's ready to leave, I can tell. Th that sounds like an awfully weak objection to me. Anyway, I am positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Very well. Right now, I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the items to kill or left behind to get here. I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. Oh god, those items are going to be so stupid. <clears throat> Let me tell you, they're, they're going to be like moronic. Well, it's a really smart item now. This request came to me, oh, about a week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory, and I believe I have made no mistakes. Well, that really... How could we honestly disprove that unless we found some evidence to say so? Hmm, so you physically met your client, huh? That is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. Maybe he accidentally said he at one point, and that's what we'll have to do. Although, that would literally throw shit back under the bus, but I don't know. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. What do we got here? <coughs> oh, about a week ago. Man, a week ago, shit was so much cooler a week ago. One week ago, are you sure? Yes, I am quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations, and I was barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. <laughs> God damn it, please stop. In any case, if my client had the time and a specific date and time, whatever the fuck that was, a specific date and time, it was a request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. You know, I wonder if we could request for his suicide. Do you think he'd follow through with that? Probably not. Eh, whatever. <clears throat> Did you ask why on that specific night? No. I tried to fulfill at the conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? Eh, what the hell. So, what are these suspicions you had? Why'd your client request that? What did your... Why did your client request that? Oh, okay, okay. Why did your... Why did your client request that night? There you go. God, Ross. I'm sure it was all for that bear. It's time for a game of... A Disappearing Bears. The bear. <coughs> Boy, my throat is just going to be dead after these three days of constant, like, two-hour recordings. My client spoke of it. I am sure there will be a bear-shaped figurine in Juan Carita's room. I would like you to retrieve that item for me. You must be talking about this bear puzzle. Inside that figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to his hotel room. He was planning on publicly disclosing its contents at the press conference, after all. That is correct. And if I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where the bear figurine was. <clears throat> I see. Well, Mr. Wright, what is the testimony just now of any importance? I want to say it was very important, but I'm not sure how. So, in reality, what he just mentioned... Oh wait, I have an idea. Here's a good idea. <laughs> I'm a bastard, aren't I? But, let's go for it. Why the hell not? I just don't want to get stuck in, like, a one insta-kill. Because I'm getting the feeling there's insta-kill traps all over the place that I've somehow been dodging. The testimony just now has made one thing clear. And that is... The client knew the secret of the bear figurine. Ooh! Huh. Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Wright, I think all of us already knew that. Oh. Really? Witness, please continue with it. <laughs> that was such a stupid flub, they don't even care. But isn't that kind of strange that he already knew the secret? Andrews and... Moncarita. I don't know. Oh, because they would have been Andrews that would have exp... 
But wait. I don't even know. Forget it. We've been a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. Do you go to bars very often? I don't. So you physically met Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? What was with the brief pause? Well, it's obvious why I had a brief pause, because he didn't meet with Andrews. Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my clients at a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. And the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Ah, sure, what the hell, why not? Of course it was very important, Your Honor. If Mr. DeKiller had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he is mistaken. Hmm. So you're saying that the client really was Adrian Andrews? Uh, uh, I guess so. You see, it is just as I said. Mm, right! <laughs> I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax. Now then, will the witness please continue? Yeah, it's not like you're losing any points, Phoenix. Don't even bother with it. That's what occurred. I trust my memory and I believe I've made no mistakes. Really? So your client was Adrian Andrews. That is correct. Well, he says the two of them met, but if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw a suspicion. <clears throat> if you can do that, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about a delicate balance. I want to press this one again. Did you ask why on that specific night? No, I tried to fulfill the conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? So what are these suspicions you had with your client? I'm sure it was about the bear. The bear, client spoke of it. Bear, whatever. Mm-hmm. No, it was not important. What the killer said sounds plausible, but, in the end, it's just his conjecture. No, Your Honor. I don't think it's very important. Hmm. Well then, witness, please continue. We met a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few details. <coughs> of course I did. What was that? Was that brief pause? It's probably just my imagination. I need to find something more definitive to catch this guy on. Can we believe that your testimony up to this point has been reliable? <coughs> huh. Alright. So let's go back to that one again. Let's go back to this one. We met at a certain bar to discuss and find out a few details. This time we won't let it slide once again. And if this doesn't work, well then the only thing I can assume is we actually have to present something. Witness. More details. No. Okay. No, it was not important. Why he meets his clients is not important, and that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop sidestepping my questions. Oh, shit, Phoenix. What do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Andrews in person? I have already told you, Mr. Wright. I did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I began to trust him. Oh boy. You know, two things are going through my mind right now. One is that he's a complete fucking moron. Obviously, he's proven that on multiple levels. And I still say that. And two, he might not be a moron in this situation. And this might be the terrible flub that that one person near the beginning of this project was talking about. He said that there was a terrible terrible, like, fucking spelling error or something, like, some terrible grammar that this game had in a translation and it's become sort of infamous. And I have not seen it yet, or I've not seen anything close to it. If this was it right here, I would laugh my fucking ass off. He's an idiot, though, and I'm assuming that's what's going to be. 
That's when I thought, I can trust this person as my client. Hmm, it's true what they say about him talking face to face. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any important- Yes, it was! It was very important, you moron! If I heard what I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was of utmost importance. Huh? Really? If that's the case, witness, please include the statement just now into your testimony. Very well. From the moment I saw him, I thought I can trust this person as a client. Um, ahem. You know, Andrews does have a, uh, a masculine streak of sorts in that she's... Before the whole, like, you know, mental state thing, she's very calm and collected and generally tries to seem to throw away her more feminine traits. But she's got tits, man. Hold it. But as we now know, that was not how it turned out, correct? <laughs> what do you mean? Adrian Andrews turned out to be a client who couldn't stick to the rules, right? Well, yes. I suppose you are correct. Hmm. So I would like to check that one last time. Are you sure your testimony is accurate? Wow. They're, they're really not making it. Alright, here, here you go. Yeah, um, uh, I think the issue here is... Oh. That's actually pretty... Wow. Jeez, that's pretty silly. Well, I think... Do I present this? I don't even know. I think this is what I present, but I kind of want to save this one because I feel like this would be a stupid thing to present. I have to present something to prove that she's a girl, and I think her picture does a pretty good job of that, but... I'm assuming that this might not be it. I don't know how to present it, but this is pretty much the downfall of him entirely. He could say it was just a flub, but man, that was not a flub. Yep, yep, okay, there you go. Overthought it. I would like to go over this one more time. You met Andrews at the bar and took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry, but that is an impossible tale. What? Shelly the Killer. You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. Wait. Oh shit, he's not an idiot. He doesn't know Andrews is a girl. Except Adrian is... Obviously, Adrian is kind of a girl's name. I did it! This is not Japan, man. You don't say Andrews Adrian. Uh, why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip up about her. So, what is the issue? <laughs> this guy is a fucking moron. Did you say just now? About her? If you had ever met Andrews in person, one look would have told you that she is a woman. Oh, oh. My, my, my. Order. Order in the court. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Well, take one guess, man. This witness testified to the following. That he always meets face to face with his client when taking their request but he has never met Andrews in person. But if he has never met, yes, Your Honor, that is exactly the point. That means Mr. Killer's client could not have been Miss Andrews. Oh, shit, he's leaking like crazy. My, my, my. Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Once again, are we, wait, this is trial one bullshit all over again. Yes, Adrian Andrews is without a doubt a very androgynous name. Adrian? I can understand the Andrew, but Adrian? I have never met, all right, you know what? I gotta look this up. I gotta look up Adrian. Oh, good lord, Adrian. Name. 
I don't even know. Look, look at this. It's a Latin baby name. Alright, whatever. What do we got? It's whatever that means for water. Adrian, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. There's a bunch of shit of people in sports. Wait, in sports? Oh, shit, it is a male name. Holy crap. Look at all this crap. Canadian soccer player, a Polish football player, a Polish weightlifter, an American baseball pitcher, Adrian Jose, or Jose, that was like in 1880. Jeez, man, look at all this shit. Yeah, there's, there's definitely some guys among this. Holy shit. Well, fictional characters, who do we got here? I wonder if we have Adrian Andrews as a fictional character. Nope, does not appear. Adrian Fahrenheit Tepez, a character in the Castlevania video games? I don't even know who the hell that is. Adrian! Wife of Rocky Balboa of Yo Adrian fame. Yo Adrian! I did it! Uh, Vulture, a Marvel Comics villain, and character in the Watchmen graphic novel. Alright, well, I guess it's androgynous. Alright. I'll give you that one, game. Hmm, yes, I see. I would have immediately assumed it was a girl, though. Let me tell you what, if I was this guy, I would have assumed Adrian was a girl's name. And I also would have gone, Adrian! At least once or twice in court. I don't care. Unluckily for Mr. DeKiller, the entire time he was on the stand, no one has stated Adrian Andrews' gender. And so, he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. What? What is going on? He's obvious a liar. Show you the killer. This court demands an explanation. And please don't kill me. Uh, um... I think somehow I must have mixed up this client with another. So does that mean you remember something different now? Y yes of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Uh, I know he's just gonna spit out more lies. Very well, but this time, please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. So we'll help you God. But we can't say that part because Phoenix Wright, you know, it's an American game. Actually, I think they probably could say God. I mean, they say God's enough in uh, Fire Emblem. Like, literally throughout the whole series. Y yes, now I remember. I took that request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. The request was for the murder of Juan Carita and uh, two or three other small things. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. Oh, alright. Fair enough. Hmm. So you took this job through a letter. He didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony. Which means he is definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know. I can't make him suspicious. But... I think we're okay. Like, we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me. No matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Let's go with it. Hit the button, damn it, Ross. No, then. Let's begin the cross-examination. Alright. We ride. You took the request by mail. Let's get started, guys. But didn't you just say that you always meet your clients? Y yes, I suppose I did say that. However, there are some clients for whom a meeting is simply not possible. But didn't you meet your client this time? No, I did not. Oh, come now. Let's stop with this game of cat and mouse. Using your silkiest voice is not going to work for me. Alright then, just cough it up and confess. Mr. Wright, you can't badger a witness with such harsh words. Um... He's kind of a murderer, man. You're a lawyer, so behave like one and present evidence instead of mindlessly yelling. Now then, do you have any proof that Mr. DeKiller met his client? I don't have proof, now. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I won't do it again. Hmm, I see. Then your line of questioning was just another waste of time. Sadly for us, Your Honor, that is the nature of right and wrong. <laughs> Alright, that was pretty good. That was pretty good, uh, Edgeworth. Alright. Gotta remember to start using the hold it button so I don't have to keep pulling the mouse over. Why could you not meet your certain clients? 
Recently, I've been receiving more requests. Oh, good. Well, nice to see that the business is high. If I meet each other and every client, I would lose some nice business opportunities. Nice business opportunities? On top of which, the times have changed. It is now the age of information and computers, correct? Well, I have joined the times and now request via electronic mail. Electronic mail. Do you have to mail that in a special insulated envelope? Ah, I'm very sorry. I despise the shortening of words. What I meant by electronic mail is what is commonly referred to as email. Email. In a contest of mimicry, the judge would be a parrot. Hands down. Ahem. Well, anyway, so you took the job without having met your client, and... The request was for the murder of one Karita and two or three other small things. What were these two or three other small things? Two or three other things? Yes. And what were those other things? A few other things have nothing to do with this case. Hmm. What should I do? Should I let him slap with that? It'd be really bad if I push his buttons the wrong way and he gets mad. Boo. La da da. Eh, fuck it. Why not? Let's find out. What do you got here, man? We'll see what happens. Maybe the game will let me slide with this one. Who knows? Sure, let's go for it. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney? Yes? Everything I have said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. Which is why I wonder why it is you're pushing you to continue with this cross-examination. Uh... Could it be... That you are planning to betray your own client? That's... Uh, <laughs> I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one... Wait. Uh-oh. This is looking real bad. I shouldn't press my luck. Alright, I have to think. Is this worth pursuing? Ah, sure what the hell, why not? I saved. Witness, this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what those other jobs your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. The bear figurine? After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And where was that figurine? It was inside Mr. Karita's suitcase. And then what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client? Interesting. Hmm. This information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you just stated in your testimony. As you wish. Alright, fair enough. So we were able to get through that without, you know, pissing him right the fuck off. I'm not sure how, but whatever. I guess instant game over would have been a little too mean for this game's dealy deal. This game is not I want to be the guy after all. It gives you a little bit of bones every once in a while. Only Karita and Andrews knew how to open it. Which means, therefore, the killer didn't actually know how to open it. He just knew where it was and how to get it. Interesting indeed. Hmm. Well, what's certainly suspicious about this is who we handed it to. Because, like we said, the Steel Samurai was who Power saw. But as we already proved earlier, that could have been Andrews. But wait. Only Karita and Andrews know how to open it. Therefore, getting handed the evidence, if this were in fact Matt and Guard, he wouldn't have known how to open it. Therefore, handing it to Matt and Guard would have been completely fucking stupid. In other words, don't press that because that's exactly what we're not trying to prove at this point. 
Alright, let's press this and see what we get. I found this figure in at Mr. Ungard's mansion. If you gave it to Miss Andrews, then what was it doing there? I was waiting for her there. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. Ungard, I'm sure. Hmm, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? Do I have to do all this? Uh, contradiction, contradiction, contradiction. Let me think about this one. I'm certain there's an objection either in this one and that last first point. Let's think. Okay. So if Andrews got handed the bear, then really quickly after the murder happened, so therefore she would have handed the bear back to him. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Go back for a second. I just saw something. It's no use. As long as I can't put my finger on the central problem here, Pressing this witness anymore would be extremely dangerous. Hmm. It appears that Mr. Wright has no problems. Well then, witness, please continue. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold the phone. I just thought of something really important there, and I have to reread that just to make sure. Hold it. So I found the figure in Mr. Uncard's mansion. If you gave it to Miss Andrews, then what was it doing there? I was waiting for her there. Wait. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. Gungard, I'm sure. Ah! He flubbed it up! Yet again! Although this one is literally from his own stupidity! Remember what I was just saying about how he was, like, he handed it in the doorway to the Steel Samurai person? Well, yeah, there's a contradiction there. So, the killer says he gave the figurine to Miss Andrews. But I know somewhere in that statement that there is contradiction. And yet, I know that if I present something trivial here, he will cut the connection on his end. If you want to make a strong point, Phoenix, you have to present strong evidence. She's right. So now what, Dr. Wright? Oh, come on! You know I'm gonna say, you guys. Don't think I'm stupid or something. <laughs> yeah, fucking going into it without saving. Witness, let's go over this one more time. You gave Miss Andrews the bear figurine, and she told you to take the bear and wait for her at Ungard's mansion. Oh, wait, 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 oh, I thought about this wrong. Uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh-oh, I thought you were saying to... Wait, no, still, still, still. And she told you to take the bear and wait for an unguarded mansion. Is that correct? Yes. Where are you going with this? Well, I think maybe you might have remembered a few things incorrectly. Here we go. What? I still think this is plausible. This is a battle of wits. I can't let up on him. I don't think it's possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. Because it doesn't bear her fingerprints? No, it would have the same fingerprints and all that shit. Hold up. Maybe this? I don't know what would be the thing. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Wait, no. No, uh, okay. For a second there, I thought something. If this suicide note was written by Andrews, then yeah, that would have been totally something, but no. Because then she wouldn't have wanted the bear in the first place, but no, 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 no. I don't think it's possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. <laughs> Although that could still sort of be it if she was in on the fact that the suicide note was fake. But I don't think she was. Why? Why would it have been impossible for her to be the recipient of the bear? The 
the only thing I got here... Maybe the hotel guide map? I mean, we haven't used this thing at all. This map has been literally completely fucking worthless. I'm not even kidding. I mean, we haven't used it. It's completely worthless. Didn't even come up once, unless I'm stupid and completely forgot. But no, 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 that doesn't help at all. Hmm. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I just thought of something. Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of the bear. Yet again. If she... I got it. I got it! If she had been the recipient of the bear, he wouldn't have fucked it up. He would have known it was a she. Boom. ba ba boom There you go. Ladies and gentlemen. So, what do you think? I mean, my point's correct, but no, no, no. <laughs> Witness. Mr. To Killer? Oh, I'm sorry. I went to visit the water closet for a second. <laughs> huh? Uh, Mr. Attorney, I think it's time I stated this in terms even you can comprehend. Yes? If you ask me any more of these pointless questions, there will be no mercy. Well, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna take that damage. Why not? Now I would like to move on with my testimony. Oh. Well, shit, if you're gonna cut back out... No, 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 we can't have that. God damn it, I have to go through your whole speech combo again. Screw that. I think I had the right idea, though. Because if she'd been the recipient of the bear... Yeah, yeah. Witness, let's go over this one more time. You gave Miss Andrews the bear figurine, and she told you to take the bear and wait for her at Unguard Mansion. Is that correct? Yes, where are you going with this? Well, I think maybe you might have remembered a few things incorrectly. I think that's such a good point, because he would have known she was a she if he handed it to her. Hey, I'm gonna hand deliver to you personally. No, no, you're gonna hand deliver to me personally. No, that is a point. That is a physical point. I don't think it's possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. Because, once again, she's a she. But I don't know how to bring that up into a presentable object. Ah, uh, damn it, man. If she was a recipient, then he would know that she was a girl. That's, that's my point. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe the bear? I think it would be Lada's picture, then. I think Lada's picture is the only thing that makes sense. Okay, maybe not. I don't know how to go about this. I don't know how to present my point. I don't even think I'm supposed to present this point. I think my point is literally something the game's not even considering. Which is kind of embarrassing. I don't know, maybe I'm just going stupid at this moment in time, and maybe I should be going for something else, but I think that's a legitimate point. He would have known she was a girl if he handed her the bear. Where am I going with this? Well, I'm going with the fact that you would have known she was a fucking bitch. But you didn't. You thought he was, uh, you thought he was a he. But she was, in fact, a bitch. So, you got it wrong, man. You got it wrong. now. So if it wasn't the crime photo, what could it have been then? I'm gonna go with the bear itself. Shelly the killer. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I think... 
The way I had to prove this, but I think Phoenix has to prove something else first before I can prove that, even though that's completely fucking stupid. I mean, come on! Come on, he would have had her know she was a girl, but I'm gonna go with the bear. And I want to know why, because I think there's another point to this that I'm not considering. If you had really given the bear to Miss Andrews, then this item should not have been inside it. Hmm? This item? I see where you're going. Yep, that's where I'm going. Where is everyone going? Do I need to pack a suitcase? No, I just need to pack a swimming trunk. We're going to the jail cell, and we're going to go find ourselves Mr. Damon Gant, and we're going to have any good swims lately. <laughs> Your Honor, please think back to Miss Andrews' testimony. And I was going to burn it, for her sake. Ah! Even for a single minute, this bear had actually been in Miss Andrews' hands. I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. That is another point, but once again, I think my point still stands, even though my point has absolutely no bearing on the court. Oh, uh, whatever. Who cares? This is a valid point anyway, and I think it's a more strong point anyhow. Order, order, order! So, that's where you two were going. Although, I suppose she could have been in the Steel Samurai costume. Oh, my, well, yeah, that's a thing, actually. Whatever. So, by the very fact that this suicide note was still inside the bear, it tells us that your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. Which means... It means, Your Honor, that it is impossible for Adrian Andrews to be the client. Because she totally would have burned the shit out of it. She wouldn't even have took a minute to open it. She just would have been like, kicking it in the corner and the whole place on fire. Oh! I love those reactions. Order. 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 <laughs> Mr. Phoenix Wright. I... I'm sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You... you must wish to break your end of our agreement. No, that's... that's not... that's enough. If that is your only intention, then it is only one thing for me to do. Wait, please! Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. N no, please, not that. Please wait. Mr. Attorney, bring this trial to a speedy end and I may stay my hand. Otherwise... Uh. Ah! What in the... Mr. Wright, are you... Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. Do you think there is a need to hear more testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should... Edgeworth, we can't do this. If we keep this up, Maya, she'll... Ugh! Prosecution, I... What has come over everyone? Even you are... The prosecution... Rests. What is going on around here? The prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. What? What? Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. If the prosecution rests with no further questions, then the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. Damn. If that is the case, then even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelley DeKiller's client is... Adrian Andrews. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. If I end the trial here right now, then your client, Matt and Guard, would be declared innocent. And in his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. Miss Andrews would be charged with murder. 
prosecution has no further questions, so you will now hear the defense's final remarks. Bailiff, please bring the defendant, Matt and Gar, to the stand. The items from the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could, but it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands. Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as truly innocent and as a truly innocent and good person. You have done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess even the old funny duddy figured me out. Mr. On Guard. You were atrocious as a lawyer, weren't you? Giving your client away like this. <laughs> and that refreshing like a spring breeze crap. It's just as atrocious, don't you agree? Anyway, get on with her pronounce me guilty or whatever innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Should I side with justice? Or should I save Maya's life? You better get him guard a guilty sentence, okay? But... But if I did that... Maya will die. But if I say he's innocent... Then Miss Andrews will be charged as a murderer. Do I say he's guilty? Or not guilty? Either choice I make. Someone's life is going to end. all hinges on what I choose. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. If the person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews, then your client, Mr. Mountain Guard, is innocent. <laughs> There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer is going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. I can't. I can't do this. But I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. My client, Matt and Guard, is motherfucking guilty. We are waiting for your answer, Mr. Wright. Matt and Guard, your client deserves an answer. Maya. I'm sorry. Matt and Guard is... Objection! Wow! 